This is Financial Standard, the definitive source of news, thought leadership and analysis for Australian wealth management professionals. Financial Standard. Take the lead. Hello and welcome to the Financial Standard podcast. I'm Eliza Faven, Senior Journalist at Financial Standard. Yesterday, the Reserve Bank Governor, Michelle Bullock, left interest rates on hold at 4.35% in March. While that decision came as no surprise to economists, some have now pushed back their predictions for a rate cut until 2025. To speak about what's to come, I'm joined by HSBC economist Paul Bloxham. Welcome, Paul. Hi. So, what did you think about yesterday's decision and Bullock's comments after the announcement? So we weren't surprised um, at the tone of the announcement. Uh, we've had a view now for quite some time, actually, uh, that the RBA is unlikely to cut its interest rate for quite some time, and, and that view has not shifted. We, we, we have the view that the RBA is likely to be on hold through all of this year and that we shouldn't expect rate cuts until early 2025. And our reading of what was said and, and what was announced yesterday is that that fits with this story. So the RBA held its cash rate steady in the press conference and in the statement itself. The governor was pretty clear about the idea that they're really ha- they really haven't decided what's coming next. They're not sure if the next move might be up. They're not sure if the next move might be down. And our view is that they also spent well. They also spent a fair bit of time telling us about weakness in productivity in the economy and the fact that wages growth, although it's coming down, is still a bit high. And we think that's going to be the primary factor that prevents the RBA from deliver being able to deliver rate cuts this year. That productivity is still quite weak. Unit labour costs costs in the economy are running too quickly uh, to believe that inflation is going to sustainably get back to target soon enough for the RBA to be able to deliver interest rate cuts this year. Okay, so if an interest rate cut is kind of off the cards for the remainder of this year, what would need to happen in the economy for them to raise rates again? Well, the governor talked about that as well. And I I think, I mean, the primary thing would be uh, an upside surprise to inflation. They can't see that they don't want inflation to take any longer to get back to target than the current set of forecasts that they've got, um, in, in, they've got factored in, and, and what that would mean is, if it takes as long as they expect, they will have spent four years. They, w- they will have been the case that inflation will have been above the Reserve Bank's target for four years. They don't want it to take any longer than that. So, if they were to get any upside surprises to inflation, anything that came along and put them off that track, and then that could prompt them to consider lifting the cash rate. Now, that's not our central case. We don't think that's likely. We think that especially in a world where the expectation is that the next move for the US Federal Reserve is down and that the Europeans might, the next move is likely to be down. And globally, we've seen disinflation underway. We don't think it's likely that the RBA is going to be the odd one out lifting interest rates. Um, but we we can't completely discount it because you know it is still possible that you got an upside surprise to inflation. The most likely outcome in our view is that they, the next move will be down. It's just that we think that it's going to take them longer to be convinced that they can actually start easing policy than the market's currently pricing or than the, the the consensus at the moment is. We think that it won't be until 2025. And some eyes have been on the U.S. Federal Reserve. Do you think that if they move to cut rates, the RBA will be inclined to follow or are we in a different economic position in Australia? I think there are some similarities, but I think there are also enough differences. Uh, one of the differences is that the Federal Reserve started lifting interest rates earlier than Australia and they lifted interest rates by more than Australia. So they've lifted their policy rate by 525 basis points, whereas the RBA's only lifted it or lifted it by less, by 425 basis points, and the RBA started later. So it almost sort of fits naturally to think that if you left, lifted rates by less and you started later, that you're probably not going to be able to cut interest rates as early. It's going to take a bit of, bit, bit, a bit of extra time. And that's, that's sort of one of the things that we've got in mind. But there are, so, so we think that the RBA is going to cut rates later than the Fed, uh, that they're not going to be one of the early central banks to be cutting interest rates. But there's also a more sort of structural point to be made, and that is one of the things that's bringing down inflation in the US has been a pretty decent supply, uh, improvement on the supply side of their economy. In particular, the US is having an upswing, a pickup in productivity. Productivity growth has been in a cyclical upswing, and that is giving them more disinflation. That is helping to bring inflation down. And Australia doesn't seem to have that at this stage. Infl- productivity has picked up a little bit, 
but it actually is still quite weak. It's still quite poor. And the way that manifests itself um, is in particular is in business costs, in unit labor costs in particular. In Australia, wages growth has picked up, but productivity has weakened. And that means that unit labor cost growth at the moment is still quite strong. It's still running too strong to be consistent with the RBA's inflation target. And in the US, you've seen some signs that wages growth is slowing, but in particular, you've seen a pretty reasonable recovery in productivity, which is meaning those costs are starting to ease. So I think for a number of reasons, we, we expect that the RBA is likely to cut rates later than the Fed. We've got the Fed penciled in for June. And so if that's the case, then the RBA is after that. And, and as I said, our central case is the RBA is not likely to cut interest rates until early 2025. Well, you mentioned productivity there, and we know that that's something that the federal government and Jim Chalmers uh, have been speaking quite a bit about wanting to boost productivity in Australia. And we obviously have the federal budget coming up in a couple of months. Do you think that there's anything in there that might spur the RBA to perhaps make a move sooner? So we don't really know what's going to be in the federal budget yet. Um, and it's still a little bit early days for, for, for really knowing but I can, I can certainly point to things that we ought to be doing in terms of focusing on lifting productivity. One of those is tax reform. Um, we ought to be looking at the tax system in a more holistic way and thinking about how we can make our tax system more efficient. We have quite an inefficient tax system in Australia. It is far too reliant on the corporate and personal income tax systems, which are quite inefficient taxes. It doesn't rely enough on the GST in terms of a revenue base. We have inefficient state taxes like stamp duty. There is a lot that could be done in terms of improving, uh, making the tax system more efficient that would potentially help to encourage and a lift in productivity. Um, we should also be looking at competition policy and things that add more competition into the economy because that actually can spur and help helps productivity to lift as well. Um, we need to look at the industrial relations environment. And I know there have been some changes made there already, but there are there's a question around whether those are those changes are going to actually lead to productivity improvements or whether they w whether they won't. So while we don't know what's in the budget yet, I certainly would encourage policymakers to be very focused on lifting productivity. The sooner we can get productivity to lift, the sooner it is likely that the RBA can start to deliver some relief. But at the moment, I'm not convinced that there's much that we've seen in terms of policy action so far that would give you much confidence that you're going to see much of a pickup in productivity. Uh, spurred by policy actions. And what about the stage three tax cuts? Obviously, the um, Albanese government announced some reforms to those. Do you think that there's a concern that that could add some inflationary pressure? I think that the, the tax cuts themselves are almost certainly going to add a bit to inflation, uh, you know, in their current form or in the previously legislated form. I think if you add more income into the economy by giving more tax cuts and giving households more income, especially if they're up against their budget constraints, they are probably going to spend a bit more of that income. And then on net, that puts upward pressure on inflation. So I think delivering tax cuts in the budget is likely to be one factor that means that inflation might fall a bit more slowly because consumption's held up a bit better. It's harder to sort of uh, to know whether the adjustments that were made to the tax, the stage three tax cuts are going to make that much difference. And I think the difference is probably fairly small. But I think the main point is that the tax cuts themselves are likely to mean that inflation falls a bit more slowly because they, they provide support for the consumer spending. And do you think that that's likely to push the RBA's rate cut back even further? Well, the RBA has already got that worked into their inflation forecasts. And if you look at their own inflation forecast, they haven't got inflation getting back uh, into the Reserve Bank's target band this year. It only falls to the uh, sort of a bit above the top edge of the RBA's target band. So they're already factoring in to their forecast that inflation falls quite slowly because they would be assuming some impact from the tax cuts because the tax cuts have been a known a known factor for, for quite a long time. But I think that's um, you know that's in principle that's right. If if uh, with, without the tax cuts, without more fiscal boost, then inflation might fall a bit more slow more quickly, and it might be a little bit sooner that we could think about getting rate cuts. So the fiscal story matters. I mean, the other way that the fiscal story matters is not just what's already legislated um, and not just sort of talking about what's going on with productivity and the possibility that you see some reform announced in the budget, but I guess the risk also that you might see additional spending measures that come through in the budget. Um, if there were more additional spending measures announced, that too would probably support demand 
And if that were to happen, that might mean that inflation might fall even a bit more slowly. So there is definitely a, a fiscal element that we need to look out for that has a bearing on the timing for thinking about when the RBA will feel comfortable enough to start lowering its cash rate. Okay, Paul, well, thank you so much for joining us today and for giving us your insights. Happy to help. No worries. Thanks for listening to this Financial Standard podcast. For more information, visit financialstandard.com.au. Please keep in mind that the information discussed in this podcast is general in nature and does not consider personal circumstances. Reliance should not be placed on any content without further independent financial research and advice. 